Bugatti's latest car, the Chiron, much like its predecessor, Veyron, is named after a legendary racing driver. So here's a potted history of Louis Chiron. The man, the legend, the racer, the, um, dancer. Unlike many racing drivers of his generation, Chiron wasn't born to rich parents. Both of his worked in a hotel. And after a stint working as a chauffeur during World War I, Chiron ended up working at the Hotel de Paris in Monaco as a dance partner for the uh, wealthy ladies around town. Chiron was a young, charming, charismatic, good-looking young man, so you could see how it was easy for him to woo the ladies of Monte Carlo. However, he had his eyes set on a different prize. While he was very good at his job, he wanted to be a racing driver. Now, dance partner to racer does seem like a little bit of a leap, doesn't it? But the ladies he was dancing with were a pretty good source of contacts and cash, so sooner or later he found himself with a sponsorship to farmer heir Alfred Hoffman's racing team and a shiny new Bugatti. Chiron managed to make up for his more humble beginnings to Bugatti by being an amazing driver, kicking ass all over the place. And he was heavily involved in setting up the first Monaco Grand Prix. Now, being Monegasque, that's the race he wanted to win. And as it stands, he's the only one to win his home race. 1932 saw Chiron's relationship with both Hoffman and Bugatti come to an end. The former because of allegedly being a little more involved with the team boss's wife than he probably should be, and the latter because Bugatti's team boss was getting a little bit bored with Chiron ignoring team orders. But his style was good, it was smooth, it was a winning strategy, and he ended up racing for a chap called Enzo Ferrari in his Alfa Romeo team. World War II put a stop to motor racing in Europe for, well, obvious reasons, but after the conflict ended, Chiron got back in the seat. He ended up being the oldest person to ever compete in a Formula One race, coming sixth in the 1955 Monaco Grand Prix shortly before he turned 56. There is one story that shows Chiron in a less than favourable light. At the 1949 Monte Carlo rally, he essentially ended the career of one of the most legendary female racing drivers there ever was, Helen Nice. She, like Chiron, came from more humble beginnings. She'd worked at a casino in Paris, she'd been a dancer and even a nude model. But she turned her hand to racing and raced a Type 35 Bugatti. She was so good that one publication even nicknamed her the Bugatti Queen. At the 1949 Monte Carlo rally, Chiron approached Nice and loudly proclaimed that she'd worked for the Gestapo during World War II. The fallout from this was understandably massive. Protests to the race organiser fell on deaf ears. Chiron had called for her to be barred from the competition. Her career effectively ended, all of her sponsorships dried up. She died in poverty and alone after her mechanic slash lover ran off with the last of her cash. The weird thing is, no one knows why Chiron approached Nice, and there was actually no evidence linking her with the Gestapo in the first place. Even after he retired from professional racing, Chiron remained heavily involved with motorsport, even being the Commissaire General at the 1979 Monaco Grand Prix. Shortly after he dropped the flag, he passed away. He left behind him a career that very few would ever be able to replicate. There are highs, lows, and plenty of wins. And now, Louis Chiron will forever be associated with the fastest car on the planet.